דרכנו, שמע קולנו. אבינו מלכנו. I mean, I'm a historian and a philosopher, and I'm, I'm, I'm an academic, but you can't just live buried in books and, and working simply on pure theory. I also think academics have a moral duty to be involved in peacemaking, in, in, in conflict prevention, and in healing. The point of being an academic, the point of being a philosopher, is to help heal these conflicts. There are millions of people around the Middle East in suffering, in pain, in hunger, in insecure status, there are refugees, um, because of the conflicts in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and the ongoing problems between Israel and Palestine. If I, as a philosopher, can do something to help, I will. So the idea of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission for the Middle East is just to, to create a forum, a context, in which people from all sides of the disputes can come together, discuss. At the moment, maybe they can't meet in the same room in a conference-type venue. Maybe this is where the media comes in, we can, we can take the camera to them, we can hear their stories. And it's, it's tragedy on both sides, isn't it? The, the history of the Jewish people going back to the, their own experiences in World War II, concentration camps and so on. Many of the current population of Israel had relatives who died there or themselves survived it. Um, but the Palestinian narrative is, is, is deeply disturbing and tragic as well, and, and we need to hear that. And I think the world needs to hear both sides. So it's a project focused initially on Israel-Palestine, but with the wider Middle East um, on the agenda. Maybe just, just to sort of think about what we're saying philosophically, it's not so much that the God of those peoples did make selective preference, but rather that the people felt themselves to be specially called and it's, a, it's an emotional thing, it's an emotional bond. If you've suffered as a people, and if you look at the history of the Jewish people, even when they were wandering patriarchs with Abraham in a few tents, they were always getting into trouble. They were always, you know, I mean, poor old Abraham didn't really have a home. He was always on the move. Um, he got into trouble in Egypt. You know, he, he, he always falling into trouble, his descendants the same. There's a lot of insecurity but you know, in the history of these people. Abraham, of Abraham wasn't a Jewish person. Well, he's you know regarded by the Jews as the founder of the... The, of the, Jew, the Judaism he's, be, he's, became, <clears throat> uh, began so far from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. Uh, what do you mean? You see to, them Today the in the radio, I heard a professor that's speaking about uh, this kind of, uh, you know, philosophy. Right. That the Judaism became uh, from Yehuda, from uh, Yehuda and the uh, uh, Maccabee, Maccabee. It's been the far, Maccabee from, uh, far from Abraham. Abraham was a person and not a Jewish person and not a Muslim and not a Christian. I think in 1942 uh, that they were taken to the concentration camp, the old Jewish community. 60,000 people who lived in Thessaloniki were taking back trains to what was called at the time the New World, and that was of course Auschwitz in, uh, in Poland. And uh, after a few hours, all, uh, all, most of the community were, was uh, killed, confiscated, you call it, uh, at the gas uh, uh, chambers. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was 14 years old, so, so um, they um, uh, spare her life, you know, because she was able to work. And she managed to survive, um, because she, has, uh, she had a lot of imagination. She was, she was young, she wanted to live, and she used her imagination to, to, to imagine that she's being somewhere else. It gave her a lot of strength and some luck as well, and uh, she managed to get out, but uh, the rest of the family and the community uh, were, were killed there. So she was one of the few survivors? She of was the one of the few, yes, yeah. Yeah, one of the few survivors, oh. and uh, after uh, the war, the Second World War was ended, she came to Israel as an illegal immigrant,
right. because at the time uh, it was before Israel was uh, the state of Israel was established, mm. and it was of course the British mandate on on uh, on, on, on Israel. And I think in my story I represent uh, the story of uh, the new Jewish or Israel state because I have no relatives basically. I don't know many people. I don't have any aunts or uncles or... Um, mm -hmm. and I'm all, all they all been killed basically? Yeah, they've mm -hmm. all been killed by India, no cousins, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically she, my mother, she had to start new life here. I am the victim of the victims of the Holocaust. I am the indirect victims of the Holocaust. Auschwitz is terrible, I cannot deny it, I cannot minimize it, but I am not the reason for Auschwitz. I am the recipient of what happened and the tragedy for our cousins happened by the Nazis. And this is very important. For me, it's not a double tragedy. It is a tragedy created as a result of unsolved tragedy where I have no hand in creating that conflict. This is what we should know. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really put the suffering of Palestinians on a court of the suffering of the Israelis. I'm talking about a Palestinian who received all of these blows as a result of the Jews and right if they have the right to have a safe heaven. I'm not going to say here or there because I'm not God and I don't believe in tribal God. I believe they have it since they are here and omitting many years of discussion and this entire discussion which is here infringing on this Antinian group talking about we are talking about two state solution now mm. and until this moment the tragedy continues for us and the Israeli government plays to be victim despite they are the perpetrator. They try to enhance the guilt feeling in the West. It's not my business and not my problem, but I wouldn't like others to solve their conflict on the expense of my children and on the expense of our peace and the expense of ours.